Hey everybody, Michael Simon here. How are you doing today? Um, kind of a while into this, but this is kind of, I think, the second day that a lot of people are home and uh, with their family, their kids, uh, you know, out of their regular routine. And I think that's kind of one of the hard things to do for all of us is, is uh, we're routine driven. We're used to seeing people, hugging people, greeting people. All those things. So uh, different routines, trying to keep everybody in a good place uh, in the food world. We're cooking out of our pantry. I almost touched my face, see, but I stopped. Uh, we're cooking out of our pantry. And what we're doing is we're going to do this for 10 days. We're doing it on uh, Food Network Kitchen on Facebook, the live. So, but then it will reshow them on our Instagram, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. So if you miss it live, not a big deal. You can still get in there and watch it. So yesterday we made um, a really simple, like one pot chicken out of the pantry. Um, we took chicken thighs, but you could have done it with any chicken or different proteins, beans, tomatoes, onions, uh, carrots, and, and a lot of questions. We answered as many as we could during it, but there were a couple good ones. Oh, See, there were a couple good ones after it uh, that came in that a, a lot of people asked. So um, I showed this little kind of, I sh used these pureed greens, and a lot of people missed that part because we, we froze for a second. So I just want to go over it again. You could do this with any soft herb, basil, parsley, cilantro, tarragon, um, and then soft greens too, spinach, kale, uh, Swiss chard. And I just chopped it up. You could chop it by hand or in a food processor. And then we just covered it with some extra virgin olive oil. That way the greens will hold in your fridge for about a month's time. If you want to save them even longer than that, you could put them in ice cream trays and freeze them and pop them out. And then you'll get even more light. But then you get the flavor from the greens or the herbs and the nutrients out of it. So it's a good way uh, if you see a lot of greens or herbs at your grocery store and you want to grab them but you're afraid they're going to go bad, this is a great way to hold them in that manner. So today we are going to make a pasta bake um, and I'm just, a lot of people were said I, I haven't been able to find a lot of meat and such. So today I'm going to make a vegetarian pasta bake. Um, you could certainly add meat and I will tell you how to do that as we go through this. We're, this is just going to be almost like a quick pomodoro one uh, with a little bit of provolone on top. But any soft white cheese will, wait, will work great on the bake. Um, also, if you want to add some frozen veggies, which a lot of people asked about, not a problem. You could add canned tuna to it, canned salmon to it, um, canned chicken. A lot of people, like those were three ingredients that a lot of people asked about. They could be folded in for protein. You could add some beans if you'd like to kind of add a little bit more protein. So you could have some fun with this, taking a bunch of directions, super kid friendly, super easy to make, and doesn't cost much at all, which is great. So do we have any questions so far, Liv? Uh, just wondering if you're still cooking in your slippers. Oh yeah, look, rocking the slippers. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, when you are on Food Network in the real world, you kind of, you know, you get dressed up a little bit more, you can't wear slippers to set, you got makeup. Now I'm in a no makeup slipper wearing uh, world. You know, I kind of rock flannels no matter if I'm on Food Network or not. So the flannels will uh, continue. Slippers will continue. Um, you know, probably I would guess by maybe day three, day four, I might be full pajamas. <laughs> you just, it could happen. And don't be alarmed. They'll, I'll have full coverage in my full pajamas. So you don't have to worry about that. Any other questions, Liv? Um, no questions yet. Everyone's right. just tuning in. All right. I like it. Okay. One onion. This is a medium sized onion. I am going to dice it. Um, if you're not as comfortable with the knife and you want to slice it, slice it. Really what I want to do with these classes is just show you, um, that we're going to use these techniques and you're going to be able to make a bunch of different things with the techniques. And this isn't about, you know, having everything perfect. It's about making tasty food, simple food that you could pull from your pantry with relatively simple ingredients that aren't gonna take you a ton of time, aren't gonna cost you a ton of money, and that could feed your family. So, onions are diced. I'm gonna turn my pan on medium heat. So this is about a medium sized pan. We could do this whole thing from start to finish in this pan, bake it in the pan. You could start it in one pan, put it in a casserole to bake it. I don't care which way you do it, either way is fine. As soon as the pan starts to get warm, 
about medium high. I'm gonna put in a couple tablespoons of, I used olive oil, pick a fat, any fat, whatever you have on hand is fine. Um, now onions are gonna go in and we're gonna let these start to kind of break down and sweat. I'm not gonna caramelize them. These are gonna go for a minute or two then I'll get my garlic in, and then we're rolling and kind of building our sauce. So the onion goes in, you listen, you could hear a little bit of a, a, a little light sizzle in there. That's what you're looking for. Pinch of salt. And again, um, some of the questions people had yesterday, you know, Michael, I don't, I haven't been able to find fresh onions, fresh garlic at the store. You could use onion powder. You could use um, garlic powder in this situation, totally fine. We have a couple of fans asking yes. how to avoid tearing up when cutting onions. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's, uh, if the, you put the onion in the fridge a little bit, it helps. If your knife is very sharp, that will help also. Um, you know, onions that are a little bit fresher help. You know, but these are tough times a little bit right now. Everybody, I think, is a little stressed. So just to relieve yourself with some tears wouldn't be the worst mm. thing in the world. It's okay, you know? There's no crying in baseball, but there is crying in the kitchen. Thank you, Tom Hanks. Um, so look, onions are going. I'm just gonna give those a little stir. And now I'm gonna add my garlic in and let the garlic start to go. A couple of people are asking about what that tool is. The, this tool? Yes. This is uh, one of my favorite. I can't, there's a couple things in the kitchen that I can't live without. People ask this all the time. Like, look, I, I've been collecting kitchen stuff for, I've been cooking professionally for over 30 years. So I've acquired a lot of things. A good chef knife, a bench scraper, a good wooden spoon and a microplane, and I'm off to the races. Then a cutting board, a couple good pans. You don't really need much more. You don't need these full sets of knives, big sets of pans, all those things. I'm a collector, so to speak, so I have a lot of that stuff. But even if you look at my little knife wall here, Liv, mm -hmm. like it's mostly chef knives. Even though I'm a collector, it's mostly chef knives. I don't have a lot of that other stuff. So you don't need a million different things. All right, so onions, garlic are starting to break down, very aromatic. I'm gonna put in about four cups of crushed tomatoes. Now, yesterday there were some really good questions. Someone said, don't have crushed tomatoes, can I use? You could use, in this case, you can use whole peel, any kind of tomato product. Um, if you, you could use, if you have a pre-made tomato sauce on hand, you could put that in there. Someone even asked, chef, could I use salsa? Use salsa. I mean, you're getting it in there. If you use the salsa, maybe put a, a little bit of water or stock to kind of loosen it up totally fine. This isn't um, about fancy judge cooking, guys. This is about getting something delicious on the table for your family um, that's not going to be a ton of work and that hopefully you have a lot of those things available. So little salt, little pepper. We actually had someone ask, how do you know how much salt to put in? I salt the taste and I know that sounds crazy, but I, I mean, I've been salting for years, so I put in a pinch. Eventually, I'll give it a little taste to see where it is from there, but I just kind of salt as I go and taste as I go. Now, over here, I have some pasta water boiling. We have one box of pasta. Whatever noodle you have in the house is fine in this. You know, is an angel hair perfect? No, but will it work? It'll work. Um, so a little bit of a hearty noodle, one box in our water. Also, this water, I put, there's a little bit of salt that I put in here. You don't have to put oil on the top. You give it a little stir, keep that going, let that start to cook. By the time the pasta is cooked, it's, the sauce will be ready to mix with the pasta, and then we're in a really good place. As I talked about yesterday, if you were watching, I like things a little bit of bite, so I'm gonna put in a small pinch of chili flakes. Now, at this point, depending on how your fridge, freezer, dry goods situation looks, if you had, if you wanted to add frozen veggies, now you would add them. If you wanted to add a canned fish or meat, now you would add them. A canned bean rinsed in, uh, that you had rinsed, now you would add them. If you had ground meat that you wanted to put in this, we would actually have browned the meat first in the pan, then we would have added our onions, then our garlic, then our tomato. So that would have happened first. Same if you wanted to put in 
um, sausage or something of that. That would have happened before the sauce. But this is just a vegetarian option. So I'm trying to give, we're getting a lot of questions. How do I make something vegetarian? How do I make it vegan? Can I do it with this? I'm trying to give people as many options as I can because I think everyone's cooking a little differently um, at home right now. Any other questions, Liv? Yes. Uh, we have someone asking why you put the pasta in the container rather than staying in the box. <laughs> um, it's a good question. This is uh, the container instead of the box is um, my wife is Lizzie's one of the most organized people that I know. Um, so she likes everything to kind of match. So container it is. <laughs> um, no other reason than that. Carolina is asking if she can mix heavy cream and tomato sauce for this. Yes, if you wanted to put heavy cream in here, absolutely you could put it in. It would almost be like a cross between a mac and cheese and an Italian bake, which would totally work. Also, some people, maybe they can't uh, eat tomato product because of the acidity level. This could be a cream-based sauce, not a problem. If it was cream, you'd go onion, garlic, the cream, bring that up to a simmer, toss it with your pasta, add any cheese that you wanted to and bake it. Any other questions? Um, Millie's asking if you are using, using frozen veggies, is there one you'd recommend for this dish? Um, I, you know, if I was using frozen veggies, uh, I mean, I think whatever's available right now is good, but frozen spinach would work great. Frozen peas um, would work great in this dish. I think a lot of it's what, what do your kids enjoy? What does your family enjoy? Maybe those are the ones you work in. Um, but, you know, the grocery stores right now, I mean, I think the grocery stores are like filling up with product then running out of product. Um, I think everybody's a little unsettled in, in their buying habits now too. So sometimes you go in there, there's a decent amount of stuff. Sometimes you go in there um, and it's limited. I also think people are shopping in a manner that they don't want to go to the store every day because of social distancing so they're they're trying to get everything done at once so look what's available and that's why i'm trying to give you guys as much flexibility as i can when we cook this stuff so that way it, it's not so locked in here's what you have to do any other questions Liv? if you are going to use frozen veggies do you need to defrost them before you put them in the pan if we are going to use frozen veggies do we need to defrost them no you could drop them right in norman just busted into the scene Norman, you can't eat garlic. That's really bad for a poochie. Um, Hi, Norman. Hello. Ma mommy left out Norman, but is not controlling Norman. <laughs> Norman, is, Norman is going bananas. Um, so we're going to turn the heat down a little bit. Oh, this is a good question. If you're low on tomato sauce, is there anything you can do to stretch it out? If you're low on tomato sauce, maybe you have some tomato paste. Um... And then you could use tomato paste in stock or tomato paste in water uh, to stretch it out. Um, you know, or, or you, could, you could thin it out with a little bit of stock. It could just be a slightly thinner sauce, which is completely fine too. All that is good. All right, so the pasta, when you're cooking pasta for a bake, you want it to be, um, you know, people always say al dente. You want it to be slightly more al dente than normal because it's gonna go in the oven and then it's going to bake again when it's in the oven, which is going to continue the cooking process. Now Norman's on a leash. Norman is ready to party. He's, he's ready to make his big um, Food Network Kitchen Facebook Live debut. Did I get it right? You got it. Nailed it. And now he's going to jump on a little. Um, a couple people asking if you can add fish to the sauce instead of meat. Yeah, I mean, you could use, uh, like I started, I, earlier I said we could start with ground beef. But you could start with ground chicken, ground whatever. Um, if it was fish, you could dice the fish up, saute it, then add the tomato sauce to the fish, um, and then go from there with that. All right, so our pasta is just about ready. I have, I'm using provolone. You could use mozzarella, parmesan, you know, kind of any cheese that, that fits your fancy. And if you're a vegan, you could omit the cheese completely. I also have, again, earlier we were talking about the little green purees. I did this with spinach and a little bit of basil. I'm going to put that in. That's an option ingredient, not an, a necessary ingredient. And we're going to give that a twist. Just work it into our sauce. If anyone wanted to include shrimp in this, would they do it the same way as fish or meat? Or mm. If you wanted to include shrimp, 
you would put the shrimp in right at the very end, right before we had the pasta and bake it, because remember, shrimp cooks very quickly. If we put it in, in the beginning, the shrimp would get tough uh, before the sauce and the pasta are ready. So if we wanted to do shrimp, we would do it at the end. Like I put it in right now, stir it, and then I would take this pasta and put the pasta in, right into our sauce. This is a little uh, spider. It's a great thing to use. I, I don't like draining pasta in the sink. I like kind of pulling it from the liquid. That way, if I need to thin out the sauce, I have the pasta water to do that, which is awesome. Let me stir this together. And again, this is just like, you know, really simple tomato pasta sauce. Get it all baked. Jennifer is asking if we can add wine or liquor to the sauce. Heck yeah, Jennifer. <laughs> if you want a little bit of wine and you got a little, like, if you have extra wine, good on you. Um, red wine, white wine would work. Liquor, I mean, you can make the, you know, they have the, the famous Italian dish, like penny vodka. You could add that. Um, Liz is passing a little bit of wine to the table right now. I would have added the wine slightly more early, early in the process, but I'm just, I'll give it a little bit of splash because this is going to be mine and Lizzie's and Liz's dinner tonight too. So we like wine. So in, the pasta goes in with the sauce. I just turn the heat up to about medium high and I am going to stir it and let it kind of, let that pasta continue to cook a little bit in the sauce and absorb the sauce, which makes it very happy. And then I'm gonna take my provolone cheese and layer it right on top. And it'll kind of start the melting process. Jason is asking if he could use zucchini noodles instead. Um, yeah, just so what, real quick, uh, 375 degree oven is going to pop it into like a cheese melt. Zucchini noodles. I would do, uh, you could use zucchini noodles if you already, if you bought them that way. If you're cutting the zucchini yourself, I kind of cut the, the zucchini kind of bigger, almost like cut it the size of a rigatoni. That way it'll hold up a little bit better in the sauce. I think that'll work really, really well um, in that manner. Um, but yeah, absolutely. What else do we got, Liv? What are your thoughts on adding pancetta? Anytime you could add any bacon product, I think it is a bonus. Mm -hmm. If you have it, we would have done that in the beginning. We would have cooked the bacon or the pancetta. Once it got crispy and rendered its fat, we would have added the onions and garlic. Then we would have added the tomatoes and built from there. But yeah, pancetta, bacon, uh, kielbasa, sausage. Anything would have been great in the beginning of that if, if you're looking for a meat-based dish, for sure. A couple people are asking about low-carb options instead of pasta. Is there a substitute? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, you could use a low-carb pot. You could use vegetables in here, which still are high in carbs. Um, yes, you know, if you look at the menu for the week where we, uh, we listed 10 items this week, hopefully we'll even continue to do this at the, in the 10 days following this. Um, you could, there's a lot of, rest, like yesterday's recipes was very low carb. Chicken, beans, tomato product, you know, very easy, very low carb. So that's not a problem at all. Um, this gets a little bit trickier because pasta is high carb. Um, you could certainly use a gluten-free pasta or something like that or roasted vegetables. But again, those aren't super low carb. They just don't have uh, gluten. Any other questions? If there's leftovers of this, <clears throat> how long will they keep in the fridge? Great question. If there are leftovers, this will hold for three days in the fridge. This will also, I know you guys always ask me, um, how will this freeze? This will freeze, fantastic. Um, if you wanted to bake it, I use my casserole dishes kind of my, for my extra scraps. But if you wanted to bake it in a casserole and then wrap it, it would freeze fantastic um, in that manner too. So uh, either way works really good there. What else? Stove top if it's not oven proof. Should we keep the top if it's not oven proof? Um, on the pan, so it'll create a little bit of steam. Drop your heat to low, and that will melt all the cheese very nicely. Um, also, if you do have, you know, a casserole or a lasagna pan, you could go on that if you still wanted to bake it. Um, but remember, with these type of pans, Pyrex glass lasagna pans, you don't want to broil it because 
it'll beat them up. So 350 to 400 degrees, no problem. Don't go um, above that temperature if it's that type of pain. Julie is asking, what are your favorite fresh herbs? Would you add them to this dish? Well, I, you know, we put a little bit of that herb puree. Julie, you're reading my mind. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in my fridge real quick. I have a little bit of basil in here. You know what? I'm going to put, we, I, I had a basil, uh, we had basil and uh, spinach in the puree. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of flat leaf, but I think any soft herb... Uh, would work really nice here. Flatly parsley, fresh basil um, would be a great garnish. You know, currently I have some fresh herbs, so I'm going to add them. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to puree the rest of kind of my green situation, a lot of that up in the next day, um, just to be safe. So I have it for long term. Um, but yeah, I think any kind of soft herb, especially basil and parsley. I think when I think, you know, this dish feels Italian-ish, obviously. Um, certainly American Italian in style. So those two are some of the ones that come to my mind really quick. All right, look at this. So we got that purple away. Mm -hmm. We let that provolone kind of melt. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of flat leaf parsley. Um, trying to use everything in the pantry and use what we could find at the grocery store. I'm still a fan of flat leaf over curly, but you know, if you could only find curly, you could use it for sure. A little bit of cracked black pepper. A couple people are asking if you're supposed to rinse your pasta before cooking it. No, definitely not. Um, do you want to rinse your pasta before cooking it? Definitely not, because you want the starch on the pasta. The starch is what uh, makes the sauce stick to the noodle, which makes pasta fantastic. So if you rinse it, you rinse that away, therefore you rinse off the ability for that pasta to really absorb um, and do all that magic that it does with the sauce. What and else do we got, Liv? Do you wash your herbs before using them? Um, these were, yes, it depends. I mean, it, like sometimes you find herbs that you're getting them from a, a, a hydroponic situation. Um, usually what I do when my greens and stuff come home, I give them a rinse, I dry them very well, put them back in the fridge, we're good to go. Um, it's not that time of the year yet here, but uh, same thing. In the, in the, if I pull them out of the garden, I don't wash them till right before I use them because they'll start to break down a little bit quicker. But typically, not always, typically most of the greens uh, and lettuces you get from the grocer nowadays have been cleaned before you have gotten them. All right, one last question before I dig into this beauty. The last question, which seems to be pretty common, is what would you pair with this? What would be a good side? Um, garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I'm supposed to say a salad or a vegetable or something of that nature. Garlic bread. Just good old-fashioned, delicious garlic bread. Loaf split down. You know, in this situation, grab if any bread that you could find, grab it. It could be a hamburger bun split in half, brushed with a little bit of olive oil and garlic powder or salt and bake it, it would be fantastic. So you don't have to get fancy. Normally I'd say, get a ciabatta, extra virgin olive oil, the best Parmesan cheese you could find, rubbed with fresh garlic. Hamburger bun, split in half, a little bit of oil brushed on there, garlic, it's gonna be fantastic with our little pasta here. All right, look but at this. But a really simple salad would be good too, no? With like just a red wine, um, Red wine, olive oil, even if Look at that, my, my very healthy wife, Lizzie, hanging in the well, background. And that. yes, a salad would be delicious. Just a simple greens, red wine vinaigrette. So one part vinegar, two parts extra virgin olive oil, nice lettuce, delicious. You can put in some croutons and Parmesan if you like. Because it cuts through some of the richness sometimes, I think. It's a good balance. Yeah. Yeah. Life is yeah. about balance. You could do a salad and garlic yeah, bread. bread. But you all know you want the garlic bread. <laughs> uh, see that cheese? Ooh. More there. And this, you know, one of the questions that we kept getting yesterday is how many does certain things feed? I, I think that's going to come down to individuals. Um, you know, this much pasta should be able to feed easy four, six, you know, 
depending on the individual. Last night I did those four chicken thighs. I think that feeds four, no problem. But again, it's gonna be a, a personal situation. Everybody eats more or less. Um, you know, I think in these times we probably all should be a little bit more uh, cognizant of what's going on, maybe try to eat a little less if we can. Um, but yeah, that's it. Any other questions, Liv? I'm gonna grab a fork. Um, I think just reiterate to people when they can find you, where are these videos going to live after? Oh, you're good, Liv. Um, so these are going to be on for the next 10 days or next after today, eight days currently um, on Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. And we're going to do them live every day, at five Eastern time. We will then get them reposted on my uh, Instagram and Facebook page, which is at Chef Simon, and it'll also link to my Twitter, which is also at Chef Simon with a Y, um, S Y M O N. When you look at it, sometimes it's, it looks like Chef Iman, but it's <laughs> Chef Simon. Um, and the recipes and, and ingredients. All, all the recipes will be across those avenues, um, so you'll be able to upload them. We're, we're trying to drop, we put the whole menu down. We also listed our pantry um, ingredients that we're going to have in house. And we're putting out the recipes the night before for the next day. So if you wanted to get prepared or get set up, shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, let's take a bite. Mm. I mean, it's so good. Simple, delicious, good tomato, a little bit of that cheese. The, the parsley actually is great in there. Could feed a bunch of people. Most kids, at least when I was growing up, this is like a little pot of heaven right here. So, all right, you guys, day two. Um, I'm going to continue to be here for you. Hopefully, we'll continue to get through this together. Um, all about love right now. All about love. Let's take care of our families. Let's keep a lookout for our neighbors. Um, remember, if someone around you you know needs food, put it on their doorstep. Give it a knock. Let's take care of people. Um, that's what we do. The other thing that I noticed is yesterday I kept saying, you know, be strong America and it's always be strong America. And then I realized when we were looking at comments from Facebook live that there were comments coming from all over the world. So we love you too. It's a big pot of love right now. So the world is going to get this together, um, get through this together and we'll just keep eating, having fun, sticking with our friends and family. I'll see you guys tomorrow at five o'clock. Peace.